just a. It is so good to see you are safe and not in trouble. What Rolly said. Miss you the bit, Tristy. <laughs> it's good to hear you're both okay. I sometimes wish that I did not poke and prod. That I had never been cursed with this avarice for the unknown. If you're wondering, I'm not yet in danger. Though I may have been, if only temporarily. Well, uh, good to see you too. I'm guessing you are wouldn't you know who. For now, yes. I did not have time to leave notice, but I knew you'd put together my location. And I see you brought some friends with you. Hmm, I see a lot of me in this one. Ah, uh, you feel it too, that insatiable hunger for knowledge. You ordered us to discover what should be left unspoken. Am I wrong? Freakishly accurate, considering we just met. I know the look. An endless gaze of curiosity. You've been unable to take your eyes off me since you saw me. Which leads me to believe you know who I am as well as I do. I doubt a 48-year-old country girl like me is all that attractive. Uh, socially awkward too. We are so very alike. Hit on my sister any harder and I'll hit on your mum. Tish! You <laughs> mum? Triste doesn't have a mother. Not even a non-genetic one. Although, I do have something else. Ooh. He doesn't exist. Where have I heard that before? Is she always like this? You don't know the half of it. I see you have brought our inevitable saviors as well. How delightful. You're unreasonably happy for being in such great peril, Tristy. Shush, I'll get you in a bit. First, though. I'm aware of your power. The power to destroy. Yeah. You not think I haven't noticed. I thank you for freeing my two friends from their parasitic grip. I'm aware you found a way to defeat. To detect it anyway, as well. Oof. You're like Coco, but ten times more creepy. And at least five times better at finding stuff out. Hey, I heard that. I can see it in your expression, Coco. You have at least one very big question for me now. Yeah, your right friend here mentioned a pyramid, and I guess I'm curious about that. Ah, uh, why of course. Pyramids are fourth dimensional objects. Abstraction of reality. A small handheld pyramid that can be used as a universal or even cross-dimensional teleporter. That's kind of something we aren't supposed to talk about, Miss Heels. Are you telling me you don't trust your own nieces? Uh, it's not. They are... Proceed. They are essential for escaping Nies' wrath. I, Pep, as well as Asperia, Fiori, and several others carry them. Wait, if we had an instant teleport, why didn't we used to get the Kara? Why didn't we just... They are teleporters for their host and them alone. They also are bound to their owner on use, making them impossible to steal, and essentially abstract. Couldn't have Pep gone and checked if Trissy was here as a safety measure in case she wasn't. I could have, but using those things is too risky for my tastes. If you position your destination even slightly wrong, you could end up with half your body being planted in a wall. Not a fun way to go. Also horrific to watch. A collision detection is tricky, yes. Which is why I tend to favor a couple locations. Ones I know won't be altered to destroy me. Although I've already forced death at least once. Face death at least once. I'm not afraid of doing so again. Pep is still bound by his fear of mortality. One perk of having an indestructible body, you take priority of more destructible matter, which is nearly everything. Uh, unless you happen to have a collusion with a living creature, then it can get ugly. Well, that hopefully answers your question. Very well. Yes. Satisfied, Coco? For now, yes. Tristy, you have the day to drive on you. The sooner we get the... The sooner we get clear of Yi's warpath, the better. Not currently, and even if I wanted, I couldn't be back to the starship yet. 
I'll explain in my balcony. I can't believe how perceptive and smart she is. It, it's on some whole other level. So this is the truth I've heard so much about. So far, she does not disappoint. Does it get all disorientating using the pyramid like that? Disorienting, and yes. It's a very unusual experience. The mortal body and even immortal were not designed for such harsh changes in environment. I'm just glad there's only a few degrees of difference between here and our hovel in Brisbane. The air is also much cleaner here, though a lot less salty. The drastic difference is incredibly strange when not travel too organically. So where much do you favor around here? Not telling. She's on to you, Pep. If I told you it would mean possible tampering with my zone in location, and I can't have that. Whoop, so much for that prank. Tristy's house is the one up on the hill. And a comfy cozy house it is. While I do admire the conveniences of the city, I don't admire the people and crowds of the city. Still striving for solace, even after all these years, huh? Surprised? Nah. Sorry, Pep, if I seemed a little less than cordial during your return. It takes some weight off my shoulders knowing you're okay. You and Broly. Back at you, forever together happily, guys. Yeah, seems you're a drug and the only detox is more of you. Ha! A tough habit to break, but not that you'd want to, right? Right you are. This is the first time I've been to Tristy's place. Nice and gloomy, I can see why she likes it. If it were anyone else, I'd assume that was a bad attempt to insult me. But you really mean that in a completely harmless way, don't you? Yeah, I'm not gonna try to outwit a super genius who is a one-up in guards every damn time I meet her. You also saved me from Nergo sacrilege, so it's not like I'm exactly in a good place to snark you, even if it were my intent. Noted. How deep does this well even go? Both of you do too many of us know. I don't go climbing down dark holes. Rolly couldn't if he wanted to. And Tristy doesn't like poorly lit or dark places for existentially damning reasons. Huh, yeah, that makes sense. Don't bother knocking. You want to be waking the malcontent. How did you know I was planning to knock? I have a knack for these kind of things. Ooh, what a cute little Abby. <coughs> it seemed no use in over a century. If there's any blessing of humans leaving us to fight the battle they couldn't win, it was that they took all their stupid religious horseshit with them. Tristy gal, that wasn't very sacrimonious of you. Oh no, seems I'm a filthy sinner. Whatever shall I do? Repent! Tell the cloudy man you were super and funky. And that such a thing was quite unfunky of you, and that you wish to be forgiven for that for your sitting most filthy. I am so sorry, Cloudy Man. It seems I've been most unfunky. Please forgive me. <laughs> I can't fucking do it. Religion is a word and it rhymes with pigeons, seven merry suckers, and the star of the song, the Holy Spirit wearing butter the thong. Stop it! I'm going to fucking lose it! <laughs> uh, I don't get it. Our planet didn't have religious figures, so I think this is something only they can enjoy. Wait, seriously? You escaped the disease of religions? Impressive. I mean, we as mammals said, we looked at what remained of the humans' ideologies and concluded it was all incredibly stupid and nonsensical, but... A planet completely untainted by religion is... is pretty extraordinary. As a heads up, Tristy, that planet is also kinda dead. Oh, sorry to hear that. You know who lives here? Nope. You've 
been living here for over double my age by the time we met. How have you never met your neighbors? Because I hate people. Yeah, but I mean, you'd think you'd have seen them at least once or twice engaged in small talk. This is a strange paranormal village where people go who want to die. There they are as happy to never socialize as I was. Ugh, yeah, I do seem to recall you telling me that. I shouldn't know it went this deep. Such as the suicide well was depth. Jeez, morbid. A big red pumpkin! I appreciate your fondness for agriculture, but please leave my gods to their own devices. I guess they don't need a miracle from God. You deserve to face your mortality for that pun alone. But then I would never... But then I would need God's salvation, and we both know that ain't gonna happen. Oh, you're gonna get us a god such a gleaming pill and in your ass if you don't stop with this hogwash right now. You mean hog squash? Ha! God damn it. Punchline? Ah! Jesus. So this is where a lifetime living with a red fruit bat hits you. It has its benefits. They more than, out than outweigh the god awful puns he tends to spread around like a silly Santa. Tristy, you've made more puns than I have now. Don't point it out, you little shit. <laughs> Leave those alone, please. Kinda need those to live. Fair enough. If only she'd listen to me like that. By gosh, it is empty! Just like my love life. Oof. Wait a minute. Lumi, keep clear of that. It's full of stink beetles. Should we be concerned that you've been collecting stink beetles? No, not at all. Translation, yes, you definitely should. What's with the laundry? Don't you wear the same stuff every day? You would think that, wouldn't you? But no, I'm not a grot who finds a little bit of laundry too tedious to bother with. Stop making this about me. <laughs> and are you gonna try and force me? Oh God! No, I wouldn't dare. Yeah, that's what I thought. Rest in peace, National Blueberry, my dear friend. 2056 to 2088. You ever talked to Nasha in death? A few times, yes. I'd rather do a proper catch-up when I know there won't be any more threats to our existence. Unless we don't succeed. So long as we have these three, that won't happen. You only just met them. How can you already have so much faith? Because I've watched them. Ever since they arrived in the starship, I've seen what they did for you, for Rolly, and more. I thought you didn't believe in the Vanus prophecy. I don't. I believe in them. I honestly god don't know why I've kept this clunky thing for so long. Me either. It's a nightly piece of shit. It really is. Just some luck chest full of supplies. What's with all the hay? I keep it in case one of the local horses or such noise comes here desperate for their yellow gold. Inviting strangers into your house doesn't seem like the recluse I know. Well, it's not a good idea to piss off a cow or a horse. Woohoo! I'm the king of the bales, and you're the trashy pale. Now I'm the queen of the hay, and you're a filthy name. Dog pile! <laughs> oh god, no, stop! My butt feel funny. Oh, my ass! <laughs> uh, get off! Well, call you. <laughs> Honestly, I. Where'd the pitchfork go? <laughs> I smell bacon. Uh oh, chase the glutton. 
quack quack a piggy I am. <laughs> really, how many pigs have you heard say quack? Would you two behave for five minutes? Pep, return the pitchfork to its place now. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'll put this back. What a charming dynamic. Ah, the pleasant smell of blueberries, bread making, and better sentimental reprieve. That last part would put you in my pudding to the Bermuda try I mean, hit list, if I didn't love you so goddamn much. Pull to what now? Don't look in the basement. Also, you girls or guests, feel free to take a look around. But don't go touching dangerous looking things. I'm sure Pep has taught you that well enough. Taught is a strong word, but yes, they should know. It doesn't taste very good. It stayed crash, you idiot. What did you expect? It's not very appetizing. It's for the horses and cattle that sometimes come by. What's this? A green even Trissy doesn't like? It's burnt yellow, you colorblind retard. Hello, fire station? We may have an emergency. Head up to the balcony. I have something I must tend to before we make any further moves. Gotta say, you've definitely got a nice place, Tristy. Oh, comfy and cozy like a country cottage should be. I'm surprised I didn't deviate into cottage cheese somewhere. You kind of look disappointed. I am. Rolly, breaker of hearts? Now, now, I wouldn't go that far. Sugar snap peas, huh? Yep, one of my favorite desserts. Trust you to find greens appealing as a dessert. Coming from the trash who dines and red you for main meals and desserts, I'll take that as a compliment. Okay, yeah, I do not have a horse in this race. That you do not. Good try, though. Big bags of flour. I make bread quite a lot, so it's good to have a plentiful supply. Blood and bad. Suit yourself, charlatan. <laughs> you have truly evolved to accommodate for the green gluttonous fat ass that is he. That was honestly more luck than planned sabotage. Stay clear of that. Frank Burtz! Yum yum yum! I wouldn't ingest those fire with you. You're smiling about having your own food eaten. What did you do, Tristy? Or shall I call you by your real name, Lilith? Ow! Oh, out of fire! Out of fire! Don't like Sazlar! Don't like Sazlar! So, what did you think of my Hellzone beans, Rolly? Oof, no wonder he had such a reaction. You literally went to hell that to find the spiciest vegetable they had, huh? They were not good at all. Ow! Oh. So, what did we learn? No eating things in Tristy's house. Then let's first off it. Very good. You could have killed him, you know. You say that after brandishing a fucking pitchfork and trying to catch the runaway bacon. I wasn't gonna actually do anything with it. Besides, death is but a mild inconvenience. If it did kill him, it would not have been the end of the world. I would rather you keep that secret more so than not. Oh, I'm aware it's meant to be a bit of a taboo, but Pep already knows, and Rolly doesn't exactly have the best means to process the information. And the girls here hardly need to worry. One of them is already dead, anyway. Was. I kinda had my undeath cured. Fair. It's just idea with such, such a thing not got around. Mortals still serve a purpose, and if they knew death was bliss, they may all start offering themselves. In balancing the equilibrium, this universe has enough issues. We'd not tell the common folk, of course. Gross! No issues here. Vegetarians, I tell ya. Oh hey, seems I left some here. Today must be my lucky day. Come to Peppy. Uh uh uh. Yeah. Mind for now. Go and brush your teeth, you unsanitary kitten. You. 
Hey, back off! It's mine! Nope, mine. You don't even drink this crap! Give it! Say pretty please, puppy! No way! Say pretty please with two pieces and a side of bacon! Quit being a Nancy! Give me my red stuff, windbag! Gimme, gimme, never regrets, puppy! Never gets, Rolly. I'll give you regrets! Hand over the red! <laughs> Try reaching a little higher, short stuff! I'll stuff you in a high shorts! Give me my drink, you bloated horse's ass! Aren't you going to do something? And miss out on this quality content right here? No way, Jose! Aha! Gotcha! I'm not gonna bump this close to the goddess. Much as my die friend may insist on it. I appreciate the rare display of manners, but that can't be healthy. Baguettes or breadsticks if you don't want to be pretentious. I saw loaves of bread, wine, multigrain wholemeal, and some white for the trash. It is highly bitter. Fits, don't it? At least wine is dignified, unlike the sugary trash you solely subsist on. God damn it, I have no counter for that. <laughs> you can't win all your battles by being a smart ass, I'm afraid. I like the cut of your jib, Tristy. Aww. To think all I had to do to make friends was to abuse my malcontent little roommates. Please stop enabling her in a psycho. Ah, I see you are a long hid memo of culture as well. Tea is my drug of being able to tolerate the red screechy fruit bath. So that is your secret. Quit making a mockery of me! I'm sorry, Pep. You're just so cute when you're angry. Oh, I'll show you angry! See, flailing his arms with one eye glaring, isn't it just adorable? I may need some more red poison to tolerate you. Mmm, daisies. That sniffer never fails. If only he could come beyond his own stink. Let's not ask for miracles, Pep. All stacked, shiny, and shoved away. Gotta say, while well, we have our differences, I respect the fact you can at least keep a clean kitchen. As I'm sure you may have worked out, I make it my habit to lock fridges and cupboards with my food in them. While he may have the strength to shatter this locked pantry, his morals won't allow it. I taught Raleigh a valuable lesson in why you don't drink from my bottles. A little bit of chili around the lip does wonders. I might need to get some replacements for some of the spices on this rack. Lots of bread, you think? Possibly too much for a single woman like myself? Well, you may be right, but it's something to do and I can always hand it out. Carrots and horseradishes. I was planning to make a stir fry tonight, but I don't think I'll get the time. These sweetbread buns are nice, and for some bizarre reason, Rolly wants another bar of them. Being self-sufficient is definitely a pretty awesome life skill. Sourdough. A bit of an acquired taste, I confess, but I've come to largely enjoy it. It's cause they're bitter like you. HA! <laughs> he says we're fondling red toxin. Ow. Jazz containing pepper and ground paprika. The bag is full of rocket, K and charge if I'm remembering right. Up there is a bunch of garlic. You can never have enough, especially not with someone who likes my garlic dishes as much as Rolly. While I could make a comment fire and cook in the great outdoors, being at home adds some convenience. Use your imagination. It's just a sink, mate. I truthfully have no idea what's in these barrels. I just use them to prop up the impractically positioned privacy screen. Easy access for shower cap towels, soap, sanitary products, and a rope. That was going to be a way out. Before Pep and Rolly came along, my life was pretty fucking miserable, not gonna lie. Dark. 
But then I actually did die, not even from a malcontent. A fairy with pink wings shot me through the chest like a fucking savage. One day I'll get her back for that. A pretty large and nice bath. Good thing about housing here, that's dirt cheap. So if you can pull up with the air of suicide and the paranormal freak shows that transpire out here, it's pretty alright. You said people come here when they're ready to die. Why did you come here? Oof. The same reason. I didn't take you as a suicidal sort. I bet you didn't put together pep consider multiple times either then. Dear goodness, what did you two go through? That's for another story. I remember this one. It's what I wear when I, when I, uh, on second thought, maybe I shouldn't say. That part of me is pretty personal. No, it's okay, Triste. I won't tell if you won't. It's not important right now, anyway. Those are the plans for this house. I only found them recently. They even document the um the secrets. I've never seen you wear this. Probably because I haven't. Not since I broke it off with that asshole Rexarius, anyway. Oh, you meet your old terrible husband? Boyfriend. We never married, thank the gods. I usually ask Pep to sweep, since he has a lot of energy. But right now, the floor is clean. Buttercup, what a great smell. Try not to eat them this time. Yes, madam. Good dog. I usually let Pep sleep here when him and Rolly are visiting. Pep keeps a couple of arms in here when he's over. And the predictable red rep scallion's antics never would have you think any else. A large area of books, some of which I have not encountered copies of anywhere else. This one about fragmentary esoteric diagnostics has no author. Instead, it is under an alias. The Man of a Thousand Names. Of course, I know exactly who that is. We'll be going down there before long, but not yet. Keep clear of that. I make sure to stock Rolly with enough truffles to last a while. You're so thoughtful, Trusty. I'm not doing it for you. I just would rather you eat those than start going after my food that isn't detestable plant matter. Ah, oh, the smell of hyacinths. For one who constantly misnames towns, cities, and other such things after food objects, I'm glad he can enunciate the names of flowers with no issue. Comfy, is it not? I did make sure Rolly could get a good night's sleep. He does love his puppy pauses. Yes, I do. <laughs> I'd not put your hands in that one if I were you. A photo of my dear deceased Nasha with her favorite flowers, blue chrysanthemums. Some may question the relevance of having a map of a distant world on this one. Let's just say I really enjoyed my time there. Sometimes I do have coffee, but only when I really need to stay up late. If there isn't fresh fruit and vegetables near me you reach, then it's clear I'm not organizing my house correctly. I used the wood spheres back when I was in the Great War, but now I just keep them as memorabilia. The techie ring I invented outclasses these by leagues. <laughs> Empty, just like my social life before meeting these two. Tristy, I don't think it's healthy to be grinning about that. Let me cope! Just some locked chests full of supplies. I honestly can't remember what's in those crates. Books, probably. I truthfully have no idea what is in this barrel. A sack of pomegranates and nectarines. They are probably some of my favorite stone fruits. 
Potatoes in that one. Well, he only likes them when they've been cooked, thankfully. If I recall right, I'm fermenting olives in that one. Olives or prunes. 